I'll begin by interpreting the problem statement. This problem involves a block of material. The block has unknown volume. It's submerged in water and the weight is 300 newtons in water and 700 newtons in air. The goals are the specific weight and the volume of the material which makes up the block. Next, I'll connect this problem to my everyday world. I know that when I swim, I weigh less. I can go to the bottom of the swimming pool and do push-ups or handstand very easily. Of course, my weight doesn't really change. What really happens is that the buoyant force of the water is supporting my weight. Let me show you how this works. Consider a block in water. The tension force here is the force required to hold this block up, to hold this stationary. And we know that pressure increases in the water as we go down in depth. Thus the pressure stress on the bottom of the block is greater than the pressure stress on the bottom of, on the top of the block. And thus there's a net force which is tending to act upward, and this is the buoyant force. So if we think about all the forces acting on this, there's that tension force which I showed you, the last drawings, the buoyant force, and then there's a downward force equaling the weight of the block. And so we have two upward forces, the buoyant force and the tension force, and one downward force, which is the weight. And th these three forces balance in equilibrium as given by this equation. So here's how I build my documentation. I define my situation by describing the problem in one sentence as I've shown here. I make a situation diagram. This represents the tension force required to hold the block in the water. And this represents the tension force to hold the block in air. And here I've documented the specific weight of water. Documented my goals. So I'm looking for the specific weight and the volume of the block itself. To find ideas for reaching my goals, I drew free body diagrams of the block in water and the block in air. When the block is in water, there's a weight, and the weight is the weight per volume of the block material times the volume of the block material. There's a tension force and I visualized a cord holding the block in equilibrium. And then there's a buoyant force. And the buoyant force is equal to the weight of the displaced water. So that's weight per volume of water times the volume of the block. When the block is in air, over here there's a tension force to hold the block stationary and a weight force downward. So I applied force equilibrium to each free body diagram. Here's the equation when the block is in water. Here's the equation when the block is in air. And what you want to notice in these two equations is that there's two unknowns. And the two unknowns are the volume of the block and the specific weight of the block material. And so there's two unknowns and there's exactly two equations. So I can very easily solve these with algebra and reach the problem goals. So I numbered this equation as equation one and this equation as equation two. Then I built my plan. Step one is to solve equation one for the specific weight of the block material, then plug this into equation two. Step two of my plan then is to solve for the volume of the block, and step three is apply equation two, then to solve for the specific weight of the block material. Here's how I executed my plan. I solved for the specific weight of the block material and got this algebraic equation, and I numbered this as equation three. Then I plugged equation three into my equation one. Here's the first part of that. Then I solve for the volume of the block. Then I substituted numbers in. I got a final answer and then I wrote that with three significant digits. 
so the volume of the block is about 40.8 liters. Step 3, I applied equation 2, which is here, to solve for the specific weight of the block material, and I put numbers in, and I came up with this as my final answer. So the specific weight of the block material is 17.2 kilonewtons for every cubic meter of volume. Review comment number one. When I solve buoyancy problems, I think of two things. Number one, drawing free body diagrams. Number two, this idea that the buoyant force on an object is always equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. Review comment number two. The volume of the block was 40.8 liters. To visualize this, I pictured a one liter bottle, which I've sketched here. And so I imagine I have about 41 of these. Another way I visualize this is I converted 40.8 liters to cubic feet and I came up with about 1.4 cubic feet. So I imagine a block that was one foot by one foot by one foot and then half again is big and that would be the volume of the block. So a couple different ways to visualize this answer. Review comment number three. The specific weight of the block material came out to be this value, so I calculated the specific gravity and it came out to be 1.75. And to visualize this, I looked at a couple data points. The specific gravity of aluminum, so this is aluminum, is 2.7, and the specific gravity of PVC is 1.4, so this is PVC. So this specific gravity is somewhere between PVC and aluminum, so the block might be made out of a plastic or similar material. That concludes this example problem. I hope you found this very useful. See you next time.